Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. All right, so I want to get to Luis uh, Aceves' uh, question. Uh, hopefully, I pronounced the last name uh, correctly. So the um, the question, common question, was Shane the one to cut a scoli in half and find those burrowing worms? How can you tell if a scoli has them? Oh, next time in Denver, don't leave early so we can do that shot of tequila with Meckley. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, on that last bit, I wish I was actually going. I wish I went to Denver this year. It's like I was on the fence about going, and then in the end, I was like, oh, no, I've got too much here to do. But yeah, next year it was definitely. a great show. Um, I, was, I was there. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, as for the um, uh, scullies and that, I've been cutting them for years, and uh, I've tried the grafting and like sticking them together. They don't grow back together. They just form two separate pieces and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it's actually the, the the, the worm you're referring to is actually a lithophaga boring mussel. So they're much like the mussel that you can eat, but they're smaller. They, cre they secrete an acid and they dissolve the skeleton in the base of the coral. And then they have this little tongue type thing that they spit out through, into the flesh of the coral and they irritate it. Mm. And then they feed on the coral slime. Um, and yeah, so you might have seen a video of that the Jamie Craggs had up in his Magna talk because he, he hit me up about it. So I had a video, so he included that. Uh, and I, I'm a huge advocate of cleaning all of the excess skeleton off solitary polyp corals because I would say at least 95% of all of them. And just every, it doesn't have to be solitary polyp. Like I've seen them in all types of corals but they're the ones that are affected the most. Mm. Um, and yeah, how you tell that they're in there is if you've got a scully going back, well, I'll just use scully for example, but this applies to Desh, Sinarina. There's so many solitary corals around and it, it, they generally just recede in from the outside and they're just looking a lot flatter than they were. And it happens a few months after you get them because, well, I shouldn't say because, because that infers that this is 100% proven, but my theory as to why it's happening is in the natural reef, corals regrow a hell of a lot faster than what they will in aquariums. So this irritation that's caused by the muscle up in underneath the coral will get a chance to heal out in the ocean. And the coral has food available all the time. These solitary polyp corals are almost out feeding all of the time. So they're getting this nutrition that they need to repair the damage that these muscles are doing. And a lot of the time they can actually outgrow the muscles. And you can see that in older growth skeleton. So where the polyp's sitting up on top and you've got a lot of old skeleton, there's a lot of corals they stack. It's called patellate growth. You can see right down in the bottom, you've got the fleshy polyp up here. And right down in the bottom, you can actually see dead lithophaga muscles where the coral has outgrown it faster than what that muscle can irritate it but in the aquarium we are not getting that growth even on the farm you don't get the growth that you would in the wild so mm. these corals actually irritate the uh, sorry these lithophaga irritate the corals faster than they can grow and then the coral instead of using this you can feed it you can give it amino acids you can do you can have the perfect water quality but the energy that that coral is using to repair the damage and make slime for this lithophaga to live on is not being used to grow. So it's just using it to repair. And a lot of the times the coral just goes backwards and starts receding into the middle. So my advice, if you have a coral that's receding into the middle, find someone with a bandsaw and trim away all the skeleton and then angle it right back into the skeleton cut, angle it back into the bottom underneath the mouth and just see what you find. If that Scully, for example, is sitting on a big rock, get rid of the rock immediately. It all has to go. If it's not coral and not related directly to the coral, there's a really good chance you have a lithophaga in there. How, um, how, how 
common is it for those things to kind of spread from one coral to the next? You know, um, if you have it in an aquarium, I, it's. I don't think it's happened. Uh, it's the same probability of a giant clam spawning in your tank. If you've got giant clams spawning in your tank and you just so happen to have baby giant, giant clams pop up, it's they're a mollusk and they are they spawn exactly the same way as other mollusks. So um, I, I think the probability of having baby lithophaga popping up all through your system is next to nothing because we don't have that happening with clams really. So gotcha. 